Largely thanks to the Vikings TV series, the name Ragnar Lothbrok remains infamous even now, over 1,000 years after his supposed death. But who exactly was Ragnar? Did he even exist? And if he did exist, was he exactly as he is portrayed in popular culture? Well, the first thing that I should point out is that Lothbrok was not his real surname. It was in fact a nickname. Roughly translated, Lothbrok means hairy breeches in Old Norse. Historically speaking, the one event that I can be categorically convinced that Ragnar actually attended was the first Viking raid on Paris, which means that he must have been born sometime around 815 to 820, as the Paris raid took place in 845. The Paris raid was well documented by Frankish scholars and monks, all of them seemed to place the blame firmly at Ragnar's door. Despite being hailed for his prowess and influence concerning many major Viking Age events, experts now believe that other notable figures could be credited with most of them. For example, King Horik I, King Reginfried, and Ranvald of the Irish Annals. According to literary sources, Ragnar Lothbrok was a long reigning king of both Denmark and part of Sweden. He was said to have been a highly skilled and feared warrior. Some even said that he was a direct descendant of Odin. But how accurate are these sources? Much of what we know about Ragnar comes from the sagas and poetry, most of which was written at least a century after his supposed death. Even Ragnar's death is subject to controversy. The most popular theory is that he was slain by King Ayla of Northumbria, who threw him into a pit of vipers. Another version sees our protagonist meeting a grisly end after developing dysentery or cholera whilst invading Paris. After reviewing the evidence, and I use that term loosely due to its obvious flaws, I find both scenarios very plausible. Records written by Frankish monks around the time of the attack on Paris suggest that the citizens of the great city, barricaded within its walls due to the Viking invasion, succumbed to some sort of disease. Equally, more than one literary source recounts the tale of a bloody feud between Ragnar and King Ayla. It is also widely accepted that the sons of Ragnar avenged his death by killing Ayla. If this is true, then perhaps this helps to point towards a more probable version of events. The Krakumal, written in Iceland sometime during the 12th century, seems to support the theory that King Ayla was responsible for Ragnar's death. In it are the last words that Ragnar apparently spoke before being thrown into the snake pit. It gladdens me to know that Baldur's father, or Odin, makes ready the benches for a banquet. Soon we shall be drinking ale from the curved horns. The champion who comes into Odin's dwelling, or Valhalla, does not lament his death. I shall not enter his hall with the words of fear upon my lips. The Aesir will welcome me. Death comes without lamenting. Eager am I to depart. The Desir summon me home. Those who Odin sends for me, the Valkyries from the halls of the Lord of Hosts. Gladly shall I drink ale in the high seat with the Aesir. The days of my life are ended. I laugh as I die. I won't lie, I'm not entirely convinced of the authenticity of those words, for the following reasons. The Krakumal was written by Christians in Iceland many years after Ragnar's supposed death. If the legend of Ragnar's death is to be believed, Ragnar was the only Northman present, how would those words have been recorded so accurately by King Ayla's English-speaking henchmen? More to the point, why would they even bother? After all, Ragnar's words about the Norse gods and afterlife would have been considered blasphemous by their standards. How would the 12th century Icelanders have been able to recite such a long speech word for word three centuries later? I know that the people of Iceland have successfully continued the tradition of oral storytelling telling for generations, but this seems a little far-fetched to me. In my opinion, it is far more likely an embellishment, yet another myth, designed to further add to the overall persona of the legendary hero. Ragnar was apparently married three times. Firstly, to Lagatha, the shield maiden. Secondly, to Borghorta, the noblewoman. Thirdly, to Auslaug, the daughter of Brynhilde, another famous shield maiden. It is generally acknowledged that Ragnar had five sons, Björn Ironside, Ivar the Boneless, Uber, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, and Halfdan Ragnarsson. There are also rumours that he had another son called Fidzirk, but there are barely any mentioning of him in the sources that I've studied. 
According to the legend, they all sailed to England in 866 with a massive fleet, henceforth known as the Great Heathen Army. Their intention was to avenge their father's death and according to the sagas they succeeded in brutal fashion. They supposedly performed the Blood Eagle on King Ayla and also murdered King Edmund of East Anglia for good measure. Although much of the legend is open to, de open to debate, there are a few rumours that I can dispel, which, sadly, most fans of the Vikings TV show seem to accept as the gospel truth without, without bothering to do some basic research. Ragnar and Rollo were most certainly not brothers. Rollo was actually born several years after Ragnar's death, and he was also born in Norway, whereas Ragnar was apparently born in Denmark. Ragnar was not the first Viking to navigate the North Sea, nor invade England. There is archaeological proof to attest to the fact that Scandinavian folk were sailing west and raiding the British Isles since Roman times. In the series, Ragnar kills Earl Haraldsson in a duel and consequently inherits the high seat of Kattegat. After doing so, he displays, displays vulgar reminders of his newly attained power and wealth, both in actions and in words. In reality, Viking chieftains were not that privileged. In fact, there were actually laws stating that people could legally disobey earls who developed an overinflated ego. In the series, Ragnar becomes the Earl of Kattegat. According to the legend, his kingdom primarily consisted of southern Denmark and parts of Sweden, whereas Kattegat was located at the northernmost point of Jutland, well outside the boundaries of Ragnar's kingdom. In conclusion, I am very much in two minds about Ragnar Lothbrok. On one hand, I fell in love with the mysterious hero of the North long ago. On the other, it's clear to see that much of the evidence points towards him being a mostly fictional character, created by combining the personalities and deeds of several influential Viking Age figures. Whatever the truth may be, I'm sure that we can all agree that the story of Ragnar Lothbrok will endure and live on to enthrall and captivate others for many generations to come.